All right, good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Kayla Hunter. I'm with Southwest Florida RE Group. Um, hope everybody's having a great day. Our goal as real estate agents and loan officers is to make sure that you have a successful home closing and to give you as much guidance as possible during the entire transaction. With that being said, I've invited Rachel. Hi, Rachel. Hi, everyone. She's with Movement Mortgage. Uh, we use them a lot for our uh, mortgage loans. Uh, we're going to have an open discussion as to far as what not to do while financing a home. So our first step is gifts. Gifts are allowed under certain guidelines and you do not need to lend money. Um, you do not need to have anybody lend you money for an appraisal, a down payment, anything that's loan related unless you've received the go ahead from your mortgage lender. Correct. Um, do pay all of your payments on time. Um, when you're going through the loan process, uh, there is a credit monitoring on your credit report. So if anything happens, we will get notifications. So do pay everything on time. Make sure you're current with everything um, just to make sure that your credit situation stays the same. Yes, that's very, very important. And most people don't realize that either. Mm -hmm. so, um, you know, the next thing is don't leave an existing job. Don't make any transfers. Um, if you feel you're going to be laid off of your job, reach out immediately to your mortgage lender to ask any questions. Um, there's, there are certain ways that, you know, Rachel may be able to work something for you, but again, communication is key in anything, um, especially that leaving an existing job is, um, it could be a big no, no. So mm -hmm. Well, especially right now during the pandemic, I mean, there's so much uncertainty out there. A lot of people have been losing their jobs, being furloughed, um, what have you. So as Kayla just mentioned, communication is key. So if something happens, something changes, don't hide it from us. Let's, you know, have the communi open communication just so we can kind of come up with a game plan and see what you know, direction we can go in. Yes, correct. Yeah, I'm, I'm big on communication with my clients. I always tell them, hey, anything, you know, during the process, if you have questions and reach out, don't, it's, there's no stupid question. Ask me, that's what I'm here for. I always tell people, you know, we're in the business to close loans. We're not trying to mess stuff up for people. So, you know, if we run into an obstacle, we're going to find a way to make it work. Yes, that's very correct. Okay, awesome. Um, the next thing is, is I know we all love our mothers, but no co-signing co in any way. So if you have a friend that needs a car or your mom says, hey, I'm buying a property, do you want to co-sign with me? While you are undergoing the financing you know, process, no co-signing whatsoever, not for a credit card, not for furniture, not for nothing. If for any reason you have a question, give us a call. Cannot, cannot stress that enough. Mm -hmm. um, and touching on that a little bit, no big ticket items. So a lot of times people will be approved with their mortgage and they get all excited. I'm going to go buy a car. I'm going to go buy a boat. Stop. Don't do any of that. Um, and another thing that people don't realize is, you know, when you buy a home, you know, obviously you need furnishings. Yes. Don't buy it until you're closed. <laughs> because okay. that's really mature and qualifying. Yes. Especially if you're opening credit. Yes, exactly. Yeah. I'm like, if you have the cash and sense, you know, again, speak with your mortgage lender, mm -hmm. they'll guide you in any way. Maybe there's some reason they need to have that money in your account in order to complete the loan. So right. again, you know, if you're spending more than that 10 bucks, just give a call and ask, um, again, no stupid questions. So, um, yes, do not buy for chains, no trips, no target spending, you know, don't be me. <laughs> 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 so that yeah. ends in Starbucks, unfortunately. <laughs> Step away. <laughs> um, okay, so the next thing is uh, no large bank deposits or withdrawals. So again, we are trying to keep everything exactly the same from the moment that we got you a, your approval until the end of the loan. So no large deposits. Then they're going to ask you questions. Where where'd you get the money from? You know, is it allowed? Did you, did your dad give it to you? If your dad gave it to you, then they have to have, you know, again, it's a gift. So Rachel then would have to confirm she's going to have to go on a scavenger hunt. If you're taking out large deposits, again, it's, we need to keep everything exactly the same from when you went in to when you're going out. Right. Exactly. Um, any large deposits, they do have to be sourced per guidelines. And we just have to make sure it's coming from a legitimate source. 
So it's important that you talk to your loan officer before making any giant deposits. Um, a lot of times I have clients who keep cash in a safe and think that they can use that for a down payment. Unfortunately, because of the guidelines, they don't allow it. It must be seasoned funds. Yes. Yeah, I've had a customer, um, her dad had gave um, them a few thousand dollars towards as a gift, but he kept it, you know, underneath the mattress type of situation. And obviously when the lender at that time, this was a couple years ago. So at that time, you know, he was like, where'd the money come from? Well, unfortunately she had to give that money back. Dad had to take money from an account in order to convert it um, mm -hmm. just because that cash source had came from, you know, somewhere within the home and things like that. So it does happen again, ask the questions. So. Yep. <laughs> All right. um, one of the biggest things is stay on track, stay within the timeline. There's so many contingencies within the contract um, that Kayla puts together when she's writing it up for you. And if you're not, um, you know, sending in your documents on time, allowing us to order the appraisal or ordering the inspection, or falling behind schedule. And what you're doing at that point is essentially putting your earnest money deposit at risk. Yes. Yeah, we don't want that happening. That just makes everything way more complicated. You know, and obviously for some reason, you did have to have an out within the contract. You know, we have to stay within the certain timelines in order to have your escrow deposit being returned. Um, not only on top of that, but I'm sure you're going under contract for a reason. You would like to close on that home, which is why we are going through all of this processes. So again, it may also result in you not being able to purchase that home if we do happen to fall underneath of certain timelines that were not met. Then it turns into buyer default. There's also a thing called seller default, which we could touch on at a later time. But buyer default, buyer default, again, you do put your deposit at risk which obviously depending on how much you're putting down could be even more of a situation. Um, so yes, timeline is everything. And we have all those dates. We have our transaction coordinator. She will keep every one of us on our timeline, but we need you to also do the same with us. Agreed. Yes. hundred percent. Okay. Our next thing is um, paying off collection debt. So a lot of times, you know, you get your collection agencies calling you, oh, you owe a thousand dollars for this hospital bill and you owe a thousand dollars for the car that was repossessed and, you know, whatever, whatever it may be. Um, talk with your loan officer. Majority of the time, it's not going to help you. Um, it, it, it may look better, you know, but again, talk with your loan officer. She's going to let you know if that's going to help you at all in this given circumstance, um, as far as, you know, helping your credit, helping, uh, uh, your debt to income ratios and things like that. I always say if anything's in collections more often than not, um, leave it in the past, just worry about the future, everything that you have currently, let's make sure we're making our on-time payments and, um, just being diligent about, you know, keeping the credit up. Um, but collection items, a lot of times if you pay them off, it either doesn't help you at all as far as improving credit score, or it may actually bring your score down. Um, so keep those things in mind and do contact your loan officer if you have questions about collection items. Back again to no stupid questions. Yeah. <laughs> Hard to ask. All right. And I think uh, we think we got about one more thing to wrap up on. Uh, do not have anybody pull your credit. Okay. So a lot of times we have a vehicle, maybe you have high interest rates and you're thinking, oh, well, if I pay off, you know, my car some, or if I refinance, because instead of paying 15% interest, I can now get 4%. Stop. Don't do anything until you close on that loan or talk with your loan officer to see if it's even an option at this time. So, you know, right now, interest rates are amazing. They're amazing across for, you know, loans are great for cars right now. But again, mm -hmm. refinancing, yes, may bring your payment down. And again, we are pulling your credit, which may hurt you in the long run. Um, don't apply for that target credit card, okay? Yes, you say 5% at every single run, <laughs> but stop, just wait, let's close the home and then you can go buy all the credit cards you want. <laughs> yes. So do not apply for any credit in any form, whether it's cards, furniture, um, do, just stop. <laughs> just re reach out to Rachel, reach out to myself. And then from that point, we'll guide you and let you know yes or no. So I guess the moral of the story is before you do anything, Yes. Contact your loan officer, contact your real estate agent, and just make sure that it's not going to um, hurt your chances of closing on that house. So, you know, utilize us. That's what we're here for. Yep. 
We are to make it as smooth as possible and make sure that we can get you closed and on time. And if not sooner, because I know with movement mortgage, I use them even just for myself on my own home loan. Uh, I think we closed in like 23 days. So it was pretty exciting. Um, most loan officers are 30 to 60 days. It just depends. And so we were able to knock it out and get it done sooner. Um, so great. So uh, Rachel, do you have anything you want to add about your guys' self or your company or anything like that? Yeah, as Kayla just discussed, you know, we streamline the process. We have our 671 for our purchase business. Um, we have an upfront underwrite, six business hours. Um, we generally take seven days to process that loan and we only need one day to close. Um, and a lot of that depends on you as the buyers. So if we're asking you for stuff and you get it in immediately, we can close sooner than later, or at least be clear to close weeks before the closing time. It's absolutely amazing. It's, it, we're, we do good stuff. Yes. Yeah, I, I do. And they have great interest rates, uh, which is definitely a pro and they're any agent through you guys are helpful. So um, again, I love Rachel. So, you know, reach out to her, but again, any, any of their loan officers are great. Um, so yeah. Awesome. Okay. Well, Rachel, thank you for joining me today and being able to uh, give a little something to our buyers to hopefully they took something from this. If you guys have any questions, you're welcome to reach out to Rachel or to myself. Um, and other than that, I guess everybody have a great day. Awesome. Thanks for having me on. Have a great day, everybody. Yep. You too. Bye.